But when Tuesday it... is four full days after Friday, not three. Uh, oh, it's yeah, Tuesday verily, today. There are times the when I do not think you pay sufficient heat to what I say, Foreman. But I didn't know what day it was. I didn't know this like this took place on Tuesday. Hello, guys. Welcome back to some more Astrologaster. We made all the wrong decisions. I, so far, I feel like I'm being very neutral with everything. Like I'm making bad and good decisions. Hold there. Be there anyone at home? Is it? By the saints, uh, tis none other than Archbishop John Whitgift. Uh, your grace, I am most honored by this most unexpected visit. Truly, tis most unexpected as I just so happened to be passing by. Indeed, I was riding by in my carriage when I found myself struck ill. My chaplain did suggest I take rest at the nearest residence, which did so happen to be this small dwelling. <laughs> Forsooth, these rooms have the look of a, of a physician's consulting chambers. Mayhap you are a doctor. If that be true, then praise be to God for this happy coincidence. A most fortunate coincidence indeed. I am Simon Foreman, a doctor of astrology and physic. At your service, your grace. Well then, Doctor, um, uh, uh, Doctor Foreman, was it? Uh, perchance you will tell me what ails me. I, I feel a kind of pain and heaviness in my side, and I know not if this be related, but my skin has of late become most unattractive in appearance. Pain in the right side of the body and sallowness of the skin? Her Majesty did remark upon it most wittily the other day at a meeting of the Privy Council. Your face does serve as a warning to us all, Archbishop. Her Majesty the Queen, verily. Uh, a moment, if I may, Your Grace, while I consult the stars. What does cause the suffering of His Grace, the most reverend John Whitgift, the Archbishop of Canterbury? Okay, let's see what I can do here. It's suffering from the condition characterized by Tiola seeping into the skin when the tube connected to the gallbladder is in the liver is blocked. This sounds possible. Uh, characterized by excuse pain in the heart and no sensation throughout the body. No, it's definitely this one. You are afflicted with jaundice, Your Grace. Yellow bile has seeped into your skin, causing it to become yellow hued in appearance. Tis the jaundice, is it? I see. Pray, have a servant boil this pouch of herbs in water. The liquor is to be injected up the fundament once each day. It Ooh. should draw the collar away from your skin and into your bowels. Uh, William! Excellent. I will have my chaplain see to it. My, my. Who do we have here? Before you take your leave, Your Grace, I would have my manservant William let blood from your right arm. Indeed. Very well, then. Before you depart, Your Grace, uh, perchance I might trouble you with a uh, request of my own. Good day, sir. My chaplain will settle payment with you anon. Alright, interesting. Most pleased, that's good. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh, he's angry with me, probably. Good day, my lord, and well met. Indeed, methinks I have not seen your lordship since since last year, afore you set off with Sir Walter Raleigh to capture those Spanish treasure ships. Ah, oh, yes. Doubtless you heard what became of that expedition. The town criers called it Raleigh and Essex's gold piracy fail, declaring it the biggest balls up since the English Armada. Aye, twas most ill-mannered of them, if I may remark. The directions you gave me were entirely wrong, for we never came across the Spanish fleet. Indeed, we found ourselves becalmed in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. Raleigh blames me for it, and although I did explain to him that it was entirely your fault, as I had gotten the navigational coordinates from you, that seemed to bother him even more. My lord, I am full sorry for any error I may have made in my calculations, 
uh, forsooth, I pray I may assist you better this day. What is it you would ask of the stars? I would have you tell me how I might regain the favour of the Queen. Indeed, tis strange she has not yet gotten over her displeasure, for the incident did occur many months ago, and we had every intention of returning her warships, filled to the brim with gold, I might add. Besides, how in the devil's name were we supposed to know the King of Spain would choose that very same month to invade England? Huh! I have not the power to predict the future. Uh, well, nay, but I have, my lord, if you oh, had no. asked me to. Verily, it is not to be borne. Only last week at a meeting of the Privy Council, during a minor disagreement regarding the Catholic rebellion in Ireland, she called me an impudent lordsplainer, whereupon she rose from her chair and molly whopped me in the face. Ooh. I half drew my sword upon her. <gasps> you mean the Queen? Aye, indeed. Her behaviour was most shocking. I even asked the royal physician whether she may have lost her mind. She is, after all, most elderly. But Mr. Smith assures me she is in very fine health and is in full control of her faculties. Her Majesty's behaviour is a mystery indeed, although mayhap it should not surprise us. A man's reason is oft insufficient to fathom the workings of the feminine mind, and, in such cases, he may have little choice but to call upon divine wisdom. To wit, let us see what the stars can tell us. What must Lord Devereux do to regain the Queen's favour? Well, 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 what must he do? He must, uh, should pretend to be in love with the Queen. Which is maybe achieved if he is gentle. May reverse his change of fortune by turning his working relationship with the Queen into a sexual one. That's funny. <laughs> should not act in haste, he should make an intelligent suggestion to a mount a military complaint in a foreign country. Should assume a position of authority in keeping with his birthright appear of the realm. Uh, must show the queen his royal man who does his duty. Yes, this. To regain the queen's favor, you must demonstrate your fealty to her. Your loyalty as a peer of the realm who sits on her privy council. To this end, the stars suggest you offer to lead a military campaign to put down this Catholic rebellion in Ireland. Your lordship is, after all, a great military leader. What better man for such a task than the hero of Cadiz? Verily, tis no ill idea. Tis no ill idea at all. Yes, indeed, I shall offer to put down the Irish for her. Forsooth, how difficult could such a mission be? I shall quickly defeat those fence-sucking muck savages and be back home by Christmas. Huzzah! Huzzah! Godspeed, my lord. I really hope this doesn't go badly. A little pleased only, huh? Good day, Mistress Payne. How may I help you this day? Blessed day, Dr. Foreman. I am just come from taking my niece to visit Rochester Cathedral. Thomas Blogg is the cathedral's dean, I believe. Know you of Dean Blogg? Aye, I know something of him. Verily, that man is a model to us all. Under his stewardship, the cathedral's decorative furnishings have been stripped away. He has even replaced the silver candlesticks with pewter. Such pious modesty in the sight of God. Has he indeed? How very interesting. And uh, godly, yes. Uh, but what is it that brings you this day? Before I begin upon my business, Dr. Foreman, I must insist you acknowledge your failings. You were most wrong to frighten me with these notions of England being invaded by the Spanish. Ah, yes, that. Though, to be fair, I do not think anybody could have predicted the storm that sunk the Spanish ships. It was most unexpected. And we must give thanks to God for the divine vengeance he wrought upon the heretics. I did hear that by morning our beaches were verily littered with the corpses of Spanish sailors. Praise be to the Lord, his glory to behold. Ah, uh, yes, praise be. But all the same, you seem anxious this day, Mistress Payne. What is troubling you? Indeed, I am troubled, Dr. Foreman. I fear for the Queen's health. Everyone is saying that as she is exceeding old, she is soon to die. 
Ah, yes, I quite understand your feelings, madam. How we love our good Queen Bessie. Long may she reign. Uh, but will she? That is the question, is it not? For she cannot live forever, and when at last she does expire, we shall be stricken with such lamentation and grief. Mayhap you, but not I. Elizabeth Tudor is naught but a septed whore, but still a whore who presides over the Church of England and keeps Rome at bay. And without an heir, who knows what manner of foreigner may succeed her when she dies? For all we know, he may flood the land with foul popery. Uh, foul popery? I take it you do not care for dried floral arrangements. Uh, but, madam, surely fresh flowers are more customary at royal funerals. Did you not heed me, Mr. Foreman? I wish to know whether the English throne is safe from a Catholic successor. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, then let us consult the stars. Is our Queen's long reign in danger of ending soon? And, if so, do we risk a Catholic succeeding her to the throne? No. I don't think so. Uh, cooperation offered by a foreign country, not what it seems. Double it. Represents England as ally, King James Scotland. Cooperation disrupted with violence. Okay, uh, what about this one? Queen's legacy is saved even if she dies. The successful one made the head of the church in England and loyal of the... Sure, this one. The Queen's prognosis is good, madam. God will ensure she remains in health for some years yet. And when at last Her Majesty does expire, Whomever succeeds her will happily take his place at the head of the Church of England. I may assure you that England will not revert its allegiance to the Church of Rome. Ah, oh, praise be! To know that England shall remain safe from Satan's earthly servants is well indeed. Fare you well and may God give you a blessed day, Dr. Foreman. I'm not going to look up if you died that time or not. A uh, little pleased. It's better than not pleased at all, I guess. Ah, <laughs> I knew it. Good day, Mr. Moore. Didn't really like I'll him much. you this fine Tuesday. Uh, oh, on my word, you do not look well. Your face is very pale, and I detect a foul odour. Tis true, I fare not well. But there is no reason to be rude about it, Foreman. Sir, I was merely expressing my concern. You appear stricken with fever, and, methinks, an infected wound. I. I shall undo my breeches for you. There, do you see? My, my, I do see. Tis a knife wound by the look of it. The barber surgeon did stitch it up, but now it does ooze this noisome green stuff all over my fine linens. So, I came to you. And you were very right to do so. Aye, I was, because I think it only fair that you fix it. After all, this is all your fault, Foreman. My fault? Uh, sir, I do not follow. You told me I had nothing to fear from that wretched maiden's family when I broke off my engagement. But you were wrong. Uh, then I am most sorry for it. I gather the family did not take the news philosophically. Verily, they did not. The maid herself wept, as is to be expected. But the father took it most violently. He called me an oath-breaking chudlord. Whereupon he laid hands upon me and threw me out onto the street. Indeed. But was not the end of it. For some weeks later, I was set upon by the maid's brother and his band of knaves. They left me for dead behind an alehouse. If I had not been discovered by the night watch, I might have died. Ah, sorry business indeed. I will have my manservant, William, clean your wound and apply a balm to it. But... Pray tell me more of your fever. How oft does it come? Well, I did not have this fever yesterday. And I was well enough to go to church on Sunday. Oh, and to the theatre the day before. But Friday last, I was stricken abed with it. Fever this day and Friday last. Hmm. Now mayhap we consult the stars. What kind of fever has Lancelot more? 
I don't know. Poisoning? Addiction? But I don't know what day it is. Uh, I'm just gonna pick this. I don't know if that is the right thing. We have the tertian fever, a fever that comes every three days. It causes rigor and vomiting, headache, and a sharp heat that runs throughout the body. Now, uh, first, William will bleed you. God's breakfast. Do you not know your numbers, Foreman? No, I don't know what As day I it is. I did expressly tell you the last time I had this fever, it was Friday. But when... Tuesday is four full days after Friday, not three. Oh, oh it's yeah. Tuesday Verily, today. There are times the when I do not think you pay sufficient heat to what I say, Foreman. But I didn't know what day it was. I didn't know this, like, this took place on Tuesday. All right, let's see what he is coming with what now. What a pleasure it is to welcome your grace once more to my humble consulting chambers. Do you ail of something, sir? Nay, I am in good health. I am come for information. Uh, that is, I am come for an astrological reading concerning one of my deans, Thomas Blagg, the dean of Rochester Cathedral. I hear you are acquainted with him, are you not? Yes, so please, Your Grace. I am honoured to say that Dean Blagg is one of my querents. I see. What a remarkable coincidence. Uh, then you may know that Dean Blagg has been petitioning me to promote him to the rank of bishop, specifically to grant him the vacant seat of the bishopric of Salisbury. I wonder if you, that is, if the stars and planets and so forth, might tell me if there be any reason why Thomas Blagg might not be a fitting candidate for such a position of responsibility. I see. Then let us see what these stars can tell us. Should Thomas Blagg, Dean of Rochester, be made the Bishop of Salisbury? No. The current John is not an honorable man. Blake is a frugal manager of church funds. Be wise to cover it with his employees. No. Uh, sure. Stolen from the church. Financial deceit is being committed against the church. Dean Black is an unreformational attorney. Dean Black is questioning his religious principles. No, it is definitely this one. You must not grant Thomas Blagg the bishopric of Salisbury, Your Grace, for it seems Dean Blagg has been embezzling from the church. He has been removing cathedral furnishings, fine paintings, tapestries, candlesticks and the like, and selling them for his own enrichment, or may have to pay off his personal debts. Verily. Well, I do hear it remarked that the Rochester Cathedral has been looking a little... Puritan of late. Mayhap I shall have my chaplain cast an eye over the cathedral accounts. Before you leave, Your Grace, uh, perchance I may broach a small matter of my own. Uh, methinks you have the power to grant medical licenses, do you not? Uh, uh, although I am an experienced physician, uh, you may have heard of my work during the plague of 1592, for instance, I am not technically licensed to practice medicine. It has been causing some administrative troubles of late. I wonder if your grace might condescend to help me by... You would have me grant you a medical license, would you? Hmm. I suppose that might be arranged. Leave it with me, 
and I will have my chaplain look into it. I thank you heartily, Your Grace. Your Grace is most generous. All right, let's see if we can do it. Only a little pleased. Well, that's not exactly good. What do you mean, give her a break? God give you good day, Mistress Blag. Pray tell, what brings you? I would know whether my lover, Owen Wood, is resolved to leave me something in his will. A small legacy, mayhap. A large one. <laughs> I do hope he intends to leave me something. Owen Wood? Uh, he is the Dean of Armagh, is he not? Or was not your interest directed toward the Bishop of London? Aye, but your counsel for wooing him served me most ill. When the bishop came to visit right. the archbishop in Lambeth, I smiled and nodded and kept my knees together like you advised, but was all for naught. The archbishop's That's wife so thought I was taken ill and sent me to bed directly after dinner. Or sooth, I am sorry to hear it, though mayhap it was for the best. Now, perchance we may proceed to this matter concerning Owen Wood. Uh, pray tell, why would you wish to know whether he has included you in his will? Is he gravely ill? Not presently, but methinks he will be soon, for he has gone to Ireland to join that peacocking mumphead, the Earl of Essex. I see. He has gone to fight in Robert Devereux's military campaign to put down the Catholic rebels in Ireland. But you're being a little harsh, are you not? Tis true he has had some bad luck of late, but the Earl is a fine... Oh, a swole-headed failson is what his lordship is. It would not surprise me if he read his map upside down and marched his men into a bog to drown. Pray, let us do my reading, if you please. Uh, certainly. If Owen Wood, the Dean of Armagh, were to die, would Alice Blagg inherit anything from his estate? Uh, could not resist being troubled to his lover. She is due to receive a legacy of the world upon his death. Christ to... Uh, upon his death. Um... Well, match between Alice Blake and Owen Wood is married with conflict and deceit. I honestly don't know. I guess this one? This is what she wants to hear, so let's just say uh, that. Indeed, mentioned in Dean Wood's will. Unbeknownst to his wife, he plans to leave you a portion of his fortune. Forsooth, that is what the stars do tell. But if I might offer you my own counsel... Oh, what an angel of a man! Did I not know it? Dearest Owen, I shall raise a toast to him at the quiet bear this even. Uh-oh. Well, she was happy at least. Only a little pleased. Oh, it's this guy. <laughs> Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> he missed up his good life morning, completely. Blog. How may I do you service this day? I hope you will do me service, Dr. Foreman. For at my last consultation, you served me very ill. Ah. Indeed. Your prediction that Raleigh and Essex would succeed in capturing those Spanish treasure ships did put me in a most lamentable position. I had my tailor fashion me these fine new robes. And now I have not the money to pay him for it. Then I'm heartily sorry for it, sir. Though your new robes are indeed very fine. Is that a different shade of black, or...? And I know not how, but my wife Alice has lately learned of our perilous financial situation. Ah, has she? Aye, and she has had me petition the Archbishop for a promotion. Tis her reckoning that if I were promoted to Bishop, the increased living would enable me to settle our debts. That would seem wise under the circumstances. And was your petition successful? It was. At least at first. Indeed, 
His grace did have me believe he is minded to make me Bishop of Salisbury. The Bishopric of Salisbury? But that is excellent well, is it not? It would be very well, forsooth. But many months have passed, and the Archbishop gives yet no sign of granting the vacant bishopric to anybody. I see. And he does not say when the matter may be decided? Nay, indeed he does not. Whenever I raise the question with his grace, he says he needs time to consider the various episcopal and doctrinal matters concerning such an appointment. All the while, he has me performing additional duties that I dare not refuse, lest I lose his favour. And Mistress Blark has sent him pies upon numerous occasions. And yet the Archbishop is not moved? Oh, he must be a very hard man indeed, for your wife's pies are well renowned for their powers of persuasion. Now, let us see what the stars can tell us. Will Thomas Blark, Dean of Rochester, be granted the bishopric of Salisbury. No, he will not. <laughs> I made sure of that. Uh, let's see, God will help succeed by performing the Archbishop opinion on Blake's race in esteem. Blake will be carrying the. No, he will not. Um, deception concerning that has been uncovered. With the British person will remain immiscible. Mickable Epic has demonstrated his scarliness. The professional business will be realized and exercise patience. No, uh, it's this. You will never be granted the Bishopric of Salisbury, I fear. For the Archbishop has discovered some irregularities in the management of Rochester Cathedral. Some missing furnishings, I think? Well, I, I mean to say, um, if. Uh... If indeed that be so, then tis most egregious. I will have some very stern words with my chaplain. Uh, Worry not, sir. The stars indicate that his grace would wish to avoid any unpleasantness. As is what? customary with church scandal, he will doubtless remain quiet on the matter for the sake of reputation. Ah. Well, of course I too would not want to bring shame upon the church. If there be such vile, false rumours circulating about me, it would be wrong not to consider the attention that my promotion to bishop would invite. I own that I am shocked and disappointed by this, but I must thank you for forewarning me. He was pleased, so that's good, I guess. And now they replaced all the silver, I uh, left it on the altar. Okay. Oh no. I completely ruined his life, but how did I do that? Oh well, anyway, I do have to... Obviously I can see here, yeah, okay. Not received, received, received. How many do I need again, if that's the case? Uh, oh, I can't save, so I have to continue. Ah, okay, well... I do hope to end this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, click that like button. If you want to see more from me, search for 8,000 with the subscribe button. And I hope to see you in the next one. And as always, stay awesome.